You guys cannot stop clamoring about the news that he wants to break here. Well, I've been watching this quarterback series on Netflix, and it's fantastic. Told you. It's far better than Hard Knocks. It is. Uh, season one is Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. So you have a great quarterback. You have kind of a middle-of-the-pack quarterback. And you have a guy who's trying to – has a second shot at being a starting quarterback. Uh, I have found that I really like and respect all three of them, but especially Kirk Cousins, okay? Um, it also appears to me that this position in the league tortures Kirk Cousins the most of the three quarterbacks. Like, he is working really hard. He's tortured by it. He knows that people are critical of his game. They're not certain if he's great, good. Like, he's aware of all of that. But I'm excited because there's breaking news because Peyton Manning, and I believe he produces the show, Omaha Productions, uh, has announced a second season and has announced the quarterbacks for the second season. No. And I'm very excited about it. No. Tell me, Jer- We're having Me and Tony are in a big debate. I'm a big Joe Burrow guy of like the top tier guys. I want Joe Burrow. He wants Josh Allen. Josh Allen is one of the guys. Let's go! Yeah. So is Daniel Jones. I think in a previous episode Danny of the Dimes. show, yeah. I think I might have said Josh Allen, Daniel Jones. And now you we're... did. I'm, I think it was on Mystery Crate. That was your guess for the lower tier guy, though. Hmm. Right. And the third one is my guy, Jake Owen. I mean, how about no that? No way. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. So you get Rodgers, Allen, and Daniel Jones. Second season quarterback. It's so good, Pablo. I'm going to need a bad one. Yeah, there's no. I need a bad one. You need a Mariota. Yeah, I want like no a Daniel, Daniel Jones. That's Daniel yeah, Jones. Daniel Jones. Uh, no, Do you think no, they told no Daniel Jones that no, we need a Mariota, and so we're getting you? No Daniel one's Jones. coming for Daniel Jones's job. The, uh, part of the story that I want to see is you young White? guy. You want Mike White? I no. I want like Baker Mayfield. They have Trask perfect. behind me. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to prove that I'm a franchise quarterback. I like that storyline. Do they know Baker's starting though? Like, he knows those three are starting. Baker is in a battle with Kyle Trask right now. The like, expectation is that he starts it. When we spoke to him in Tahoe, he certainly expected it. I'm with Mike. Like, I'd like a lower echelon quarterback. I'm not saying Kyler Murray is that guy, but he'd be interesting. He's hurt, though, right? too. So, it'd be like Daniel his, Jones his... is hearing this and being like, wow, people think I'm good now. <laughs> no, they don't. They're like, oh, that guy does not belong. Ryan <laughs> That's Dable's the bad good. one. That's the bad one, yes. Everyone's pointing at Daniel Jones saying that's a bad one. That's a little unfair. I will say from a charisma standpoint, also, he might be the bad one. Yeah. I'd like to see somebody like the Green Lizard. Now he's in Atlanta. We're trying to see if he can fight through for, for a starting yeah. job. That'd be a good one. You know what would be good? Tannehill. He's got two young oh, quarterbacks yeah. going for his job. Yeah. That ooh, that ooh, is a good Garoppolo. One. Ooh, with wow. Brady hanging over Lurking him. Yes. Corner. So, you know how there was language in Garoppolo's contract that they could have just cut him without any cap penalty? Turns out it's because it was health-related, and he passed his physical. But the second Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt, and if history is any indication, he will get hurt. Number 12's ready. Yeah. I just like how all of this quarterback – obsession all of these ideas about who's the bad one and the bad one means that you get your own netflix special i like to juxtapose this with what the running backs show currently is because that's literally a zoom call that was what their zoom was we got to get a show like quarterback so we can inflate the numbers around this position and the most recent development in the show running back that we're producing here is that saquon barkley was like i don't want to be on this show anymore the Zoom call that you guys had where it's like all of the great running backs, where it's Christian McCaffrey and Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry. He's like, no, give me Austin Eckler. No, I'm going to just take this one-year deal. Whatever you guys are organizing, right. mobilizing, collectively acting upon, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take a one-year deal that is worth up to, and again, up to is the key word here, up to $11 million if he hits these incentives that are 1,300 rushing yards. 11 touchdowns, 65 receptions, other words. Essentially what he did last year. Well, better. Just like something that he hasn't done actually in a couple of years. He has to be the best offensive player in the league to make almost a million dollars more than what he was offered originally, which is to say Saquon kind of didn't get anything. He got nothing. A $2 million signing bonus. And here's the thing. They give him the ball 300 plus times and his value goes down. He might hit those numbers, but his value goes down. That's the problem with a running back position. Christian McCaffrey, by the way, has no business being on that Zoom call. He's the one running back that's been paid. 
He's got a $45 million contract. They had to be breaking his balls, right? Like, they just had to. Derrick Henry, too, also got paid. So those two guys are like, yeah, we're good. We're here to help you. And they're like, uh... You guys are good. Like, we need the help. Right. But, I th- but I think that they do have knowledge to impart. And I- I'm bummed that I missed the uh, I missed the running back discourse by a week because I was f- covering MLS All-Star or just drinking with friends, which, whatever. You, what did what you, you cover? You know, <laughs> I covered a lot of Miller Lights. Spread? Yeah. And uh, Goalie Wars, which legalized Goalie Wars. Goalie oh. Wars are awesome. But I think it's incumbent upon the union. And every time that they have a lockout, that position should be front of mind because they're the ones taking a, a huge pounding. They're the ones with shorter career lifespans. They're the ones with their re- replacements being drafted every year in the fifth round. Their market value has been abused by the construct of the sport, and they should honestly do something. And it may be a radical notion to say this, but running back contracts should be shorter because of the position that they play so they can capitalize on their shorter careers. Also, can they just not uh, franchise tag Saquon again next year? Yeah, that's the that's the thing they that will. was not included in this deal was the ability to not the right to not get franchised again. But look, but Mike, the idea of how do you fix this? It leads us to running backs should form a union inside of their own union, which is to say that I don't think there's a way to fix it. I I, I just don't think that the interests of this population are going to democratically convince the interests of every other subgroup, all of whom also feel in some way, maybe outside of quarterback, that they're also not getting the greatest deal in professional sports when it comes to job security. So they're going to sacrifice some of their leverage to get the running backs some help? It's going to take somebody to be decent in free market capitalism, and I don't think that's what's going to happen. You can make an argument that... From the owner's decency, you're saying. Yeah, because you can make an argument that... it's the second most marketable position in the league in terms of star power. They, you, you look at your first round of your fantasy draft. It's all running backs. And I got double wide receiver. Boy, it depends on RB. Pick. If you're a snake, maybe maybe take a chance on that. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I, I part of the issue here is simply that what is happening to running backs is happening to all of the people in the industries we've just spent a show describing. Right? Value over replacement sports television gas bag, value over replacement newspaper columnist, value over replacement interchangeable part inside of an ant colony. But what's <laughs> what's difficult for guys like Saquon Barkley is that he very clearly has value over replacement back. Nick Chubb. Clearly. He has value over replacement Kareem Hunt, who is was he he was a borderline all pro. So Derrick Henry, Hall of Famer. These are these are guys, and yes, I know two of these guys got paid, but Marion Barbers of the world that are these power backs that get run into the ground, that serve a purpose for their team and help their teams win, they should be able to capitalize on, on their style and their career. But I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you make somebody special. I, I believe that value is the key word here because you're right in terms of performance. They are valuable. Josh Jacobs led the NFL in rushing, led them in total yards from scrimmage. Everybody. You can't be more valuable to your team than Austin Eckler has been to the Chargers over the last three years. He's had like 18 touchdowns a season the last three years. But the nuance around the word value is that it's an economic proposition. It's what would you pay the guy who replaced him if you had to get rid of him? And they're saying, as a market, and I think it's informed by statistical truth, we can pay somebody so much less to do something that's close to what we need them to do, even if it's not lead the league in Russia. I I also think there's an interchangeable aspect to the running back position. If you have a great offensive line, like the Philadelphia Eagles do, 49ers, I I think any number of people – could do that, and and not just the that, but the decline, the obvious decline, fast decline of running back. And I think Derrick Henry is a great example. Two years ago, he is by consensus the greatest running back in the NFL. Now, he's an aging running back, and how much longer is he going to be great? He's also the outlier because entering the league, we we're like, how much more wear and tear can he survive? And he's amassed a Hall of Fame career. There, he's. He's without precedent, someone at that size with that speed and that mileage on him. He is not 
he's not the case study for when you go into labor negotiations. Right. The case studies are guys like Marion Barber. Yeah, and also are guys like Raheem Mostert. Are guys that have these really small windows. You mean really Matt Breida? Yeah, one point four a year. Yeah, that's Nick exactly Goins. right. We'll give you <laughs> like, a thousand these are yards. the names. Yeah, and like, also you're a running back in a passing league. I don't think that can be ignored. But either. they're huge parts of the passing game. So oh, what is, Saquon well, himself some of them are. is. Some of them are. Christian but, McCaffrey is. Not but that's, all but that's how McCaffrey separates himself from the rest of the running right. backs. Right. He's a three-down back, and yes. not all running backs are. Give me Jarek McKinnon for one-tenth of the price of Barkley. But Jet. that's but that's literally what teams are doing. You know, Saquon Barkley himself is a discount. Certainly, the 49ers being astride the NFL with a rushing attack that relies on interchangeable parts is proving the point. Not every team is a Kansas City Chiefs for obvious reasons. They arguably have the greatest tight end ever, arguably the greatest quarterback ever. But look at the running back set they've had since they decided to get away from the Jamal Charles and Kareem Hunts yes, of the, the world. Super Bowl winners. Look yeah. who they've started at running back. Damien Williams. <laughs> Give me Zach Moss. No, but the real Pacheco. problem, that guy sucks. And Greg identified yeah, it, is if you have a good offensive line, the Eagles got rid of Miles Sanders. Right. He was a big part of their offense. They brought in Swift. They brought in someone else. But even last year... I think Gainwell had to start a game in the playoffs at 100-plus yards. Yes. yes. Right. When they traded McCaffrey from the Panthers, I think it was Foreman who stepped in and had four consecutive 100-yard games. They're interchangeable. Well, the reality is that I find myself making appeals based on the stuff that you make appeals on when it comes to sports media and Hollywood. You make appeals based on art. It's cool to see Saquon Barkley be the best player on the Giants. It's cool to watch Josh Jacobs do all that, Christian McCaffrey do, but that is not the same as value. We're that holding is art. We're holding how interchangeable they are against them because someone just coming in and replacing the productivity of Christian McCaffrey, if this were the quarterback position, the backup quarterback would be getting a mega deal, would be establishing a new mark for quarterbacks within his sport. So it's unfair that we just say that they're interchangeable. Quarterbacks aren't interchangeable. Because they can't be. Yes. <laughs> it's, right. Running backs right. have a special skill. If you look at the numbers, the metrics that they put up when they get tested, there's a reason why they're interchangeable. They're specimens. They're incredible at what they do. But they just can't do it at that rate that long. All this talk about quarterback, and it really is a good show. I saw the first episode, and I'm excited about the second season. It got me thinking of – the worst version of this show in sports if we were creating it. Would you guys watch Left Field? <laughs> I would, I think. With like, <laughs> I'm like picturing like Todd Hollinsworth being the host. Like the way Peyton Manning. Pat Burrow. The way Peyton Manning overlooks this, we have Todd Hollinsworth overlooking <laughs> Left Field. They're just featuring <laughs> Jeff Jenkins. <laughs> Utility guy. <laughs> How about this? Platoon Lo infielder. <laughs> long, Middle reliever. Long snapper. Huh. Oh, I'm you, in. Anything yeah, with football, you got me. I'm in, yeah. Punter? Left guard. Yeah. <laughs> Power forward. I mean, oh. if you're a stretch four, point forward. <laughs> <laughs> Left ringer. Ah, I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Man. Yeah. There's no position in hockey that's not a backup. Who's featured? Left winger. Mm. <laughs> Johan Garpenlov. Okay. Yeah. And Luke Robitaille. Yeah. Clearly. Oh God. Maybe Pavel Dimitra. What is the most boring position in sports? The Larry Burray. Counting backups? Well, that's not a position. I would say catcher. That's boring? Catcher? Really? Yeah. You touch Drag. the ball on every pitch. Yeah. Yeah, but it's well, boring. Every pitch. Tyler you know. Bertuzzi. Give me three catchers you're interested in, Roy. Marcus Nasland. Name J one, Roy. Jolly O'Brien. Marion Hosa played on the left, right? Current. Current. Yeah. Mm. That's good. How many? Jacob Stalling. You, Ooh, you guys are going back Jerome to. Jerome Ginla. You, you can't oh, go, yes. You can't go back to interesting people. It's current players. You're doing Luke Robitaille. Roy can name one current catcher. He's right. <laughs> the platoon catcher for the Marlins. I retract my criticism there, of Greg's there's, submission. There's Aldi, Aldi Ro Rashman. It is a, it's an it's an interesting position though. Like I don't think that would be the least interesting position because you're dealing with all the pitchers. Right. Like I think you could we could do where left field. I feel like was less interesting than catcher. I like left field. I want a reality Green show where back. these positions audition to get a reality show. Caddy. <laughs> Sugats would watch Caddy. Caddy would yeah, be yeah. good. Is Fluff featured? <laughs> 
Stevie Williams? He's not a caddy anymore. He's racing cars somewhere in New Zealand. What? What? Look it up. Look it up. I'm good. Thanks. Center I really mid. Don't have that on that one. Center mid. Oh, does <laughs> defensive midfielder. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> defensive right midfielder. fullback. <laughs> But the idea that you are going to have to sing for your supper a bit as a position group. This is the story of running backs in the NFL right now. This is a story of all of these positions that are now trying to contemplate, do we have to organize ourselves Ooh, John to get LeClaire. what we want? Wow. Eric Daze. Why can't it just be, and I know this is going to make me sound like a jerk, but hey, running backs, you get, hit, you get hurt the most. You should be you should be probably p- compensated a little less because but, but, there's, but you're you're making the, the argument ball the more. Most, right. But the argument that Chris is making is the one that front offices actually are making, which is we don't trust you with enough guaranteed money to make you happy. And these running backs, the, the reason Stugatz, why is Christian McCaffrey on that call? Why is Derek Henry? It's because there is some positional pride in what they are arguing on behalf of, even if they know that it is as futile as a union's job often is. They just need to make the argument because no one else is going to do it. If Saquon Barkley was a GM, he wouldn't want to pay running backs. He would say they're interchangeable yeah, right, for the most fair. part. Yes. I mean, it's just, it, at some point, it is what it is. And You're I th- only by the worth way, what you, like... I think there is room to, to regret and lament. Like, Lucy... College football, to watch these guys, to spend your time watching these guys grind their bones into dust for nothing outside of now some, you know, Raising Cane sponsorships. Like, that is a problem that informs, I think, the lament of the professional, but it's also not some, I guess, the NFL forcing college football, the NCAA, to pay players would be a great start. Yeah, that's never going to happen. I think we're all just in the, the space of, well, that's just the way things are. And that's you have to deal with it. That's life. You're not going to get paid in college. And if you want to go on and be a running back in the NFL, you have to understand that you're not going to make that money. And it's not fun and it sucks, but it's that's the way it is. And I wish there were like a better explanation. Guys are going to stop playing running back, right? That's what we're going to see here. People are just like, hey, Saquon, go play linebacker. There's always going to be a running back, though. <laughs> go like, play go back. do that. If, if you, you watch wanna... high school football, the there running back's also running the back. D-lineman. Yes. Like, the, there's right. always going to be a running back. And someone's always going to step up to collect – that four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's available to them, and they'll, you see what fighters fight for in mixed martial far, arts. Far, far, far. Hold less. on, yeah, a, like hold there, on there's always going to be someone there. Leon Dreisaitl. What Chris is saying is not wrong, by the way. But if you're Derrick Henry and you have that kind of size, you might rethink playing running back and might choose to play tight end. I don't know. You might. No, you're going to play what you're good at. You would think about it, Alex Kalorn. Huh. But they are going to, at some point, be like, "Can I play a different position? Yeah. Because, like, if I'm in college, in a different and, and, sport." That's what Carl Crawford did. Left fielder. Yeah. Quarterback. But, Chris, your point's well taken. And I think there is a regret that we can share in the best athletes deciding to not play the most interesting position. Like, there's an argument that running back, as a matter of what you watch on a football field, is more interesting than any other position. The great highlights we have seen. No, I mean, a quarterback, it, it, look, yes, throwing a – Throwing a moon ball to an All end zone All I did was make a great. facial expression, and you like argued back as if I dismissed your running back being. <laughs> that was hilarious. Think about no the one great... said anything. You were like running backs. It's the interesting. I made a face. And you're like yes, quarterbacks. But that was hilarious. I could read what you were thinking, Chris, and <laughs> you're thinking Andrew about Chuck. quarterbacks. Oh, oh wow. I thought it was Dave Andrechuk. Wow. I regret that in this way. By the way, we'll talk to Mina. Mina Kime is our friend uh, in a little bit. I regret that the nerds have won. This is the problem when you debunk tradition and the folk ways of sports so persuasively that sports begins to actually act quite hyper-rationally. Alex Tangay. Ooh, that's the, a good for, one. for me, the greatest example of what we're talking about, uh, and, and arguably the biggest victim of it, is Dalvin Cook. Free agent running back, 27 years old, uh, it, he would love to play for Miami. He's a Miami guy. He would love to play for the Dolphins. The Dolphins could use him. He would be their best running back since Ricky Williams. He's out there. He's available. He's asking too much. 
Dolphins don't want to pay that much, and that's a microcosm of what running backs are going through. And Dalvin Cook, you know, I think he's better than Saquon Barkley right now. He's better than some of these others who are available, but he's just out there twisting in the wind. I could see, like, wide receivers. They're, they're in such a tough spot because you don't show up. Why couldn't a wide receiver play running back? In fact, you've seen it already with Cordella Patterson. Like, he transitioned to running back and saved his career. No, we saw what happens when – who is the dude? Who is the receiver? Kendall Hinton, who played quarterback, right? That's the worst fantasy spot start I've ever made. But, like, <laughs> that's, that's the clinic that you want – America to see on behalf of the positional group you're advocating for as a union rep. Look what happens when you try to do this. This is why quarterbacks are getting Netflix series. And this is why, yes, Cordero Patterson is is getting away with some stuff. I really do think you're going to see guys in college being like, if you're like the stud running back, like, yeah, I'd like to play something. Like, they won't even become the stud running back. It's just like, if you want me at your school... I'm playing slot receiver that, now or that, something. I really think that they're more self-aware than this. This has been a discussion about running backs for close to 20 years. Like, they know how the perception is that they're interchangeable. There's still someone volunteering to play running back or someone that their coach is telling them, but the game go changed. play running back. But the game has changed. You're not, what are you going to do? But my Have God, you ever they, been in a football locker they room? They used to pay I Emmett would Smith. Love, I would love – to see the top recruit tell Nick Saban he's not going to play running. You don't think Marshawn? I would love it. You don't think Marshawn Lynch could have played a different position? Uh, what do you have him as? Like a know. pass rushing DN? Like they they. But why are you ruling it out? I understand the development of players. Like they go through stages of high school and they figure out what you're good at. But the argument. It's Mike, not like someone's going to show up in the pros and be like, I think I'm ghost. I think I'm. I think I'm strong side linebacker now. No, they they find out what they're best at. But well, the argument, I think, Greg. Well, is is what the parents? I played would have spring ball. Do. Yes, I played spring ball in high school. But you don't think Jonathan Taylor could transition <laughs> into a slot receiver? You don't no. think they tried Jonathan Taylor out at other positions? If Jonathan Taylor set out to be a slot wide receiver in college, to Chris's point, you don't think he could do it? He's a great athlete. He was the best running back. Okay. What are we, what are that doesn't doing? serve him well in the NFL in terms of dollars. It doesn't serve him well as a professional. Hey, I could barely make it to the pros, potentially, as a slot receiver, or I could be your number one fantasy draft pick. It's like catchers moving to first base. We're just saying, we're just asking the question, is there another position I, on I, the field? where? Because you are going to start seeing that if it's just, I can't make money at this position. I think it's going to have to happen You're earlier. never going to see this. No, Mike, it's going to happen earlier. It's going to happen earlier in the pipeline when these parents, yes. these parents are deciding, yeah. what am I going to... What am I going to stage mom my child into? You guys guys know nothing about football culture in this country. You you know nothing. Guys want to be there for their team. They're not going to say, no, I'm not going to play running back. But if you're a seven-year-old, right? right? And your parents are saying, hey, you don't want to play that position. We're not letting you line up at running back. And then when you're a 14-year-old, and then when you're a 14-year-old, a coach will make you feel really bad at best when you say, no, I'm not going to be a running back. And you're not going to go anywhere. And so most people that play football want to have a career in it. At that point, like, we are in such a day and age where if you aren't getting the minutes you want in college, you transfer schools. If you don't want to play that position, why aren't you just going to go somewhere else and play what you want to play? Okay, but you're going to go nowhere doing it. No, no, that. That's not right because at the youth level, if you're an athlete, quote, unquote, if you're an athlete, you can play just about anywhere. If you're 10 years years old. Yeah, that's what they do to find out what they're good at. And then most people, like, that we're talking about, they're good at running back. No, you decide what you're good at. Running back has been Long before the high school level, you decide. I decide I'm good at quarterback. No, at the age of 10, the running back's usually just the biggest guy in the team. Yeah, Yeah, the best athlete tends to be the running back because they touch the ball. No, the best athlete in high school football tends to be the quarterback because they just want them touching the ball every play. Yes, but to Pablo's point, when you're in Pee Wee Pop Warner football, the th- the passing game is very yes. <laughs> not good. Exactly. Just to say not right. running. Right. nicely. Guys, the guys. way you get it done triple is, is yeah, handing it off to the fastest ball. kid. Yeah, yeah, there are right. people listening to this right now thinking that we should throw this entire segment into the trash because of how naive some of these takes are. Or you're being a know-it-all. Yeah. I know it all about this. I do know it all. I know it all. He just says, I know it all. Know it all. Know it all. Like, league, this is Mike, obvious. I've played Little League football. There's a guy playing running back, and it's like, hey, go play cornerback, too. You're acting like at age 10. And you're this, acting like Alabama is this that. This 10-year-old can, like 
This ten year old can that. only play running back. Like, what are you talking you're about? You're acting you're acting like someone's gonna tell Pete Carroll, nah, I did this in Pop Warner. Saying, That's how it goes. There's going to be a lot of kids saying, I don't want to play running back. My parents don't want me to play running back. Like that's all we're saying. Like there is going to be a push against this position. <laughs> I'm not going to play running back. I'm going to play another dangerous position on this field. Show you. Yeah, linebacker. What? Yeah. What? I was Chris. Have that? you seen Pee Wee yeah. kids, Mike? They're what, not like. What do linebackers make? A lot. What? what you, you're going to go to the financial security of linebacker. Much Guys. more than much more than running back. No, Mike. it depends. Much if you're, more than if you're a back. pass rusher. If you're a lease, don't, don't tell me much more. Let's go ahead and look at what Blake Martinez has made over his career. He's actually making more money what, now selling Pokemon cards. Yeah, and, and let's look. Mike, and let's T look at what he's Blake True Martinez. Story. Let's Mike. see what Amp Lee made comparably. TJ Blake. Watt is making twenty eight million dollars. He's an elite pass rusher. Okay, it's like the second most important position in the league. But he's lucky he didn't play running back in youth league. I mean, that's what I, we're saying. I, I, you guys are mad. shows wisely. You guys are Calm mad. Down. No, I, boom. I'm I'm a hockey player now. Woo. Paul Career. <laughs>